Welcome to episode number 470 of This Week in League. I'm Nate. And I'm Jay. And I'm Glenn. How are we going, fellas? Great. Great. Fantastic. I, I am fucking feeling the burning fucking flames of white hot rage like you would not fucking believe tonight, fellas. Tell and, me. And um, it's got nothing to do with it's got nothing to do with footy. What is sticking in your craw? <laughs> so so people Did you go to war with Leo Blakely at approximately fifty minutes ago? No. This um, is something this is this is something that that, that you you'll never understand, Glenny. <laughs> Oh, is it movie? Jay, Did you Jay, see a bad Jay, movie? Jay, might, Jay, Jay, Jay may un- he may come to understand it one day, <laughs> but I have a feeling that even he won't have to understand it. But let me tell you, when when you get a <laughs> when you end up with a daughter, if, and then the daughter might want to fucking go into the dance world, it's great. I love it and I encourage it. And and my you know mine's ten years old now, and she's been probably in the you know for five years or you know at least doing dance great but then when they do th- various productions and things like that and this is the, at the moment i'm referring to the school musical which is going to um premiere tomorrow night and then shows over the weekend as well they um they go okay and you got these requirements like makeup requirements and hair requirements and everything for the for the troop and the fucking hairstyles that they <laughs> i didn't I, I didn't sign up to become a, f- a fucking <laughs> hair, a hairstyle fucking expert doing all these fucking ridiculous fucking braids around the sides of the heads and fucking up and down and around and turning it into a this and that. And f- I tell you, it's, it's quite frustrating. But see, my friend, indeed, you did sign up for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The minute... Yes. There was the some fine minute, print. <laughs> that the you minute missed. that little swimmer made it, made it through the gate. <sighs> yeah, I'm... Well, look, I'm just, that was all a I'm, binding contract. <laughs> all, I'm, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is that perhaps at times that fifteen to thirty seconds <laughs> feels 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 less worth it than others. <laughs> Aim for the teeth, boys. Aim for the teeth. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! So you're, uh, hate, you're hating on the kid, or you're hating on the dance world, or is it combination? I'm hating, of- I'm, 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 hate, I'm hating on. The powers that be at the school and the dance program and the performing arts program in general that are imposing these ridiculous haircuts. Because let me tell you, like these these hairstyles, unless unless you 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 happen to be blessed with like a a Chinese child that just has perfectly straight hair that just drops straight down, and if if you if you Which if you I have a not. child that yeah, and like and just imagine if you had a if you had a daughter, Glenny, with the hair that you you know your boys have. Could you, well, Jackson's like, grow you, straight up. It's, it's yeah, cool. you would you would absolutely be punching holes in walls. Because you, well, so you know how you know how sometimes if your food is uh, cold, right? Scientists have invented these things that you can plug in to make your food not cold. So yeah, Justin, I know, I know, if, I know, if your I know hair what you're is not straight. There is I, this invention. And the name gives it away. Yeah, so you, you're saying you're saying what this for a position got a of someone who's never had to fucking and you don't want <laughs> your mate to be a cunt. Is there something you can plug in and make your mate less I, of a cunt? Yes, <laughs> your card for a into an a, a, your a, card a, a, into a an fish. ATM and I'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say a fucking a fucking right hand, <laughs> bunch the fingers into a fucking fist. <laughs> Your problem is, but nine millimeters away. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. No, I'm I'm well in that. Well, yeah, in that. No, you know, no, no, no. Yeah, you, you. I, I understand. I understand that you're well in that, but I also understand you're never gonna fucking touch anything to do with that side of things in your what? life. I do because I'm you have fucking great at it. You because you have someone who is also. Entrenched. I I have somebody who was was so entrenched that detests that side of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> only the only the only people the only people who don't detest it are the people who don't have have a fucking clue. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't if you don't know, if 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 you've had nothing to do with it, then you don't you just you just you cannot understand how Man, frustrating do, do you, you can wanna, be. Honestly, do you want to do you want a pro tip? <laughs> What's the pro tip? Pro tip, for, so, so you you need yank to him out of it. Not for so Play for footy. separation, <laughs> separation for braids. Your Dyson, oh. 
and hair elastics. <laughs> Dyson with a short attachment on it, seriously. <laughs> Pro tip, man. You'll never look back. You'll never look back. But yeah, oh, let me tell you, it's a, uh, it's frust, it's it's a, uh, it's frustrating. Yeah, and, man, um, that that whole world oh is so God. fucking ridiculous. Oh, and yeah, and like the makeup requirements for like little children and stuff like he's like, yeah. fuck out of here. I mean, it's not like John Benet Ramsey bad, but it's pretty fucking bad. Oh man, like <laughs> so fucking bad. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, it's very very, very frustrating, but um. Especially when you when um, there's multiple people in the house and you're the one that's the fucking expert at, at styling stuff like <sighs> this. this and, well, as as a, a creative savant, this is your cross to bear, Nathan. It is. It is. And like, and, and I and I admit, I did. I did kind of. I, I did kind of create the cross origi- originally because I did in the early days of school, the school years, I did dedicate myself to fucking knowing how to do like all sorts of crazy shit. If the and narrator like, and- could just step in for a second and say, and that's where <laughs> Nate fucked up. <laughs> it, 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 really, it really is. And it you re- know what? Really I guarantee, is. and this is what I love about you, I reckon you've done a lifetime of this shit and not once ever posted with hashtag girl dad. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's my pet peeve. Like the, 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 that, that hashtag, like hashtag boy mum. Like I swear to fucking god, that that is like that's like worse than me too, and like <laughs> it is. It is, that's that's the worst one. I mean, yeah, that's a whole that's a whole other conversation. That's a member say. Do you want me to fucking hear me fucking talk about an hour about how people's, people's, like, people's identities of what 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 gender of child that they that they that they fucking ejected out of their fucking snatch, like. <laughs> You're not special. <laughs> As Ice Cube said in Boys in the Hood, you bleed once a month just like the rest of the hose. <laughs> anyway. Oh. Well, and so like, and so, so, and so, and so, like the, and so the result of the result of the state of origin game pales into fucking insignificance. <laughs> when um when the like the when you I mean well it's like, like the mem the members of the patrons they they would they would have heard yeah they heard my live reactions to everything that was happening in state of origin and there was a time where that there where there was like a grubber kick that went through and instead of it going through the hands and you know bombed a try. And I, and I remember saying then something along the lines of like, you know, I'm just like the amount of fucking rage that I'm feeling right now, like but I was pretty calm about it, but <laughs> a bit of fly on the wall when I was fucking <laughs> doing a test run of this hairstyle about fucking an hour ago. That's <laughs> that's rage. The, the, the fact that <laughs> the fact that at some point it's not gonna be a test run and you're going into it going, I don't fucking want to do this. This is going to annoy me. Clenny, Clenny, 6.30 tomorrow morning. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Oh. And again on Saturday. Oh, God damn. <laughs> this is the thing. And these issues can't be fixed by just taking the fucking parental easy card and going, here's a new pair of sneakers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fuck! That's my go. That's my go-to. <laughs> the, 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 parental, the, parental, the parental cheat mode of. <laughs> oh, anyway, tell you um, what, sorry, boy, which, Blakely which, ain't getting no fucking free sneakers. I can tell you. <laughs> which brings us to the second, the second biggest issue in my life. Um, well, actually, no, we're not coming to that game yet. <laughs> We've got to do some news first. Let's let's let's, let's just let, let's calm things down and talk about some happier things. Mm-hmm. The West, West Tigers, Tigers. <laughs> are part of West. <laughs> you know he's got plenty of time to braid his kids' hair. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, like Michael Maguire, he, he's uh, he, his his kids are, are just looking like fucking. I mean, he's he's like like he's skipped the braids and he's gone straight to cornrows. Yeah, he's got that much. To- he's got that much time, and he doesn't. He doesn't know. He's never done a cornrow in his life. But let me tell you, he's got the time to learn. And um, he's, West so, he's so sure, so sure. He, he just sent a resume in to Team Kapow. <laughs> 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 and uh, so he was terminated effective immediately on uh, on Tuesday, and uh, three and a half years. Uh, you know, best of luck for your future endeavours. Brett Kamal, he's taken over as the interim coach. I, I would imagine probably for the rest of the year, uh, unless they can get unless they can get someone who may not have a job right now to uh, to drop straight in. But um, yeah, Glenny. This changed kind of, this moved very quickly because we were talking on Monday night mm. 
on our recap episode. And I think, did I say it to you on the show? Or was it after where, where we where we just we were talking about at the time that it it the rumors going around that this weekend's game would be like his last game. Mm. And I yeah. remember I asked you about that, and I don't know if it was just us having a conversation or if it was on the show or not. But um, and then literally the next day, like the next morning, it's like, oh no, he's sacked, he's gone. Yeah. So as a Tigers fan, talk us through it. I'll tell you my Feelings. initial reaction when I got the the notification come up on my phone, and uh, <laughs> my uh, my business partner was serving a couple of customers at the time, and I was uh, just working away <clears throat> at uh, at my laptop, and I, my phone went off, and I looked down, and I was like, "Oh no, they fucking didn't, did they?" And I was having this little moment with myself with two customers in the office sitting at at uh, at Brad's desk, and um, I, I knew I I knew them, but not super well. And I I've legit started having a little moment at my desk, and these poor cunts, including including what the, the moment, the mo- the, what the moment is usually like ranting and like swearing. oh just like ah oh, for fuck fucking why fuck me, and <laughs> they're all like is this kind of right. <laughs> These new, are these and new Brad, customers that never never paid you a cent. Or no, that? no, they're, they're, but, I've known them a long time. But fuck, oh, okay. And, We've uh, been in the country from Malaysia for three <laughs> minutes, and it's all true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Look, they've probably seen me at my absolute finest, and, and the legend of the angry mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and if you know, look, they've probably heard of some colourful language from me. So it wasn't super surprising, but they were, they were all very curious as to what the fuck I was blowing up about. And I was like, the Tigers, they've just fucking sacked Maguire. Like, now? Why? Why fucking now? <laughs> and they're like, is that all? Who did what to <laughs> is, who? is that all? Is that all you... Why is, <laughs> why is that getting that reaction? I was like, you, you can't stand understand. But, look, I find that... I find the timing a little odd... Um, to be quite honest, and and a little bit disrespectful of the bloke. Um, so they so they just just going point by point. Their uh, rationale behind the timing, apparently internally, they had he, he was on the clock of like the halfway point of the season, of which round thirteen, mm. which was your buy, which was sort of the buy, which is even worse. That 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 numerically represented the point at which he had to have a certain number of wins that they thought that at this point we need. I think it would maybe five or something like that, maybe six. But and um, then that was the, that was what you would need to get to the finals, and that had to be reached by that time, and it wasn't reached. And so, yeah, what happened happened. <laughs> yeah, I get it. But even then, even then, though, if you take it, even if you take that at face value, why? On a bye week, would you not do it the week before and give the club or give the playing group two weeks with a new coach to try and conjure something up? Well, that's a fantastic question, Nathan, and uh, I'm glad you asked it. Um, <laughs> you know who's not going to give you an answer to that is uh, Justin, <laughs> Justin Pascoe and, <laughs> and the West Tigers because that yes. would seem very fucking logical and thought out, and that's it's really not what Justin Pascoe and uh, his band of merry men that make these fucking horrendous decisions um, are all about. They're not about logic and they're not about reason. Um, I will agree that the results that, you know, it's, it's easy to say the buck stops with the coach and, and, and it does. But the playing group has a lot to answer for with the way the teams perform this year. But Maguire... This season, you would say that they, you know, they've they've rallied for a, a couple of good field goal wins, and they beat the Bulldogs, and you know they've had a couple of committed performances um, in recent weeks, but lost their first five games. There's a couple of fucking howlers in there, uh, the Warriors game and the Sharks Titans game, game. In particular, oh, the Titans game as well. Mm. So yeah, those days were glaring. Results that would have probably indicated that things haven't progressed to a significant, de- to a significant degree from from the previous few seasons, right? Um, so I get it, but if you were going to sack the guy, I figure you probably would have sacked him after the 
five losses to start the season. If you're not going to sack him, then it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to, to punt him now. Um, and then who do you get next? Who, who who comes in and puts their hand up? And I, and I don't know we've spoken about this before about you know coaches head coaches that have, have coached at um, NRL level that are currently unemployed are going to jump at most chances to to get back in the sea right regardless of the club I feel and and Flanagan seems to be the guy. There's things that we saw today though that's saying that uh, that uh, Cameron Seraldo is a target and they're talking about wanna, like, you know, like a five-year contract wanna, straight up. I want to talk about like. that. Um, I just, and, and Jay, you'll love this. I just hate the idea that, and, and you know exactly where that this fucking mentality comes from. It's like, oh, we can get one back at Penrith or we can replicate what Penrith are doing. No cunt. You can't. You know why Penrith? Yeah, but going you could well, also Justin? just say that he's like. You're not fucking there anymore. You fucking imbecile. You could also say that. I'm Keep going, Glennie. I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there, boy. Had a boy into it. Three but, fingers yeah, up. Yeah, Come like, on. You know, if I was thinking, if I was thinking, you know, you know, with with some with the with the spirit of generosity, I would say that you know perhaps you know you've we've spoken about there's a couple of well credentialed uh, you know, NRL former NRL coaches that are out there on the market now. Actually, look, scrap the well-credentialed part and just say guys that have coached at NRL level. And you can see you've got guys out there like Neil Henry, um, Paul Green, uh, Brownie's available again now. Yeah. Flanagan is, is who's been touted for every fucking vacancy this year. But it could be as simple as the fact that maybe Seraldo happens to be the most highly rated guy who hasn't yet had the start. But with all due respect, I... I... I don't have intimate knowledge, and Jay, you may speak to this. I don't have a great understanding of Cameron Serraldo's coaching credentials or his ability or his techniques. Um, he's he's operating in a once in a generation organisation at the moment, and and albeit Trent Barrett came through that system. And once he was out of that system, he was he was lauded as a great attacking coach, Nathan. If you remember, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, but those he wasn't. Days. But you got to remember that Trent Barrett wasn't successful in that system either. They had the years with their with their younger sides where they were like win all the time, win all the time, win all the time. Trent comes along, <laughs> lost. He yeah. goes. Garth Brennan comes but, along, but win all came, the time, win all the time, win all the time. He goes with a reputation as a great attacking yeah. coach, right? Yeah, yeah, and. I am concerned that Seraldo may may have a similar path, if you know what I mean. And okay, yeah, no, no. Can I can I just ask you, Glennie, for your opinion on because we're we're talking a lot about what you think will happen. What do you think Tim Sheens does? Does he go for an experienced coach or does he go for somebody unexperienced? I think Sheensy backs himself to to bring an inexperienced coach and show them the ropes. Like, take them under yeah, his wing, so okay. to speak. Yeah. That That's that's what I... Sheensy's about that. And I'm... If, put it this way, if Todd Payton wasn't going so well at the Cowboys, I think he'd already have the job. Yeah. Because Sheensy loves him, he rates him as a coach, and he even when Payton was still playing under Sheens... He was under Sheen's wing as far as coaching and, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, that's it. Um, so, I, who's the best guy for the job? I don't know. I don't want the job, to be honest. Yeah. With with the board and, and Pasco, it's tough. Like I, I will say, with Sheen's there, at least you have someone that wouldn't be afraid to stand up to the board and speak his mind in front of him, and and Pasco as well. I don't think Sheen's gives two fucks about whether Pasco agrees with him or not. He's going to put his opinion forth. That is a correct take. Um, and and that's that's a good thing <laughs> um, yeah. because that's what they need. Um, so having Sheens there um, and, and bringing another coach in is, is better than what Maguire and all the other coaches have walked into. Yep. Um, but honestly, if you, if you ask me who the best man for the job is, I'm... I'm probably still trying to figure that out. 
Okay, so what do you reckon about the play where the where the players and how they're going to react on? I, this? I because think the only way you'll know is is the next game. On weekend. Yeah, yeah. The thing is that the, like, is the the obvious one is uh, like Noffa has been sat in reserve grade uh, allegedly, you know, because of disciplinary issues. Mm. That and that was this, very very vague and. Oh, yeah, it started out as because it started out with some concussion ones, and then it's turned into disciplinary issues um, for the for the subsequent weeks. Teamless Tuesday, he get the the statement comes out at quarter past two on Tuesday that that Madge's got the arse and Kamali's taking over. Mm. Four p.m. Teamless Tuesday, Noffa's back. Yeah. Ergo, yeah. Noffa is the architect <laughs> of Michael McGuire's downfall. <laughs> Here's my thing. If, if somebody came and, and said, you must take this West Tigers job, right? Gun to your head. Mm-hmm. I don't even think at this stage it's about football. Yeah. Honestly, I, I think with a team like the Dogs and with a team like like the Tigers, you would walk in there and say, well, um, and as, as somebody pointed out today, you know, so talent's thin in the league. You know, I think it was... Um, Sharky Dave or someone pointed it out. Talent, talent's thin in the league. We've got another team entering and they're cashed up. Anyone that's smart, and let's just assume that all other clubs are decent operators, have locked up anyone that's of any value. Mm-hmm. So so player movement isn't isn't what it was. You're not there, there's not the Ben Hunt off contract situation mm-hmm. that that there was. Right? Um so, so really, uh, we we better hope that our that our juniors that are coming through are fucking spectacular. Who have we got? Who's the next gen of West Tigers? Oh, oh, we're coming fucking stone motherless last in Reggie's. How fucking good are we going as a club? Then the only avenue left here <coughs> is to say hello, board. Um, I need the rest of this year, and I need world-class sports conditioning minds. I need nutritionists and fucking sports scientists and people that can make sure that we can go for 80 minutes with other teams. We might lose, you know, our defensive structures all need work, but we will keep pace with these teams for 80 minutes. That's the only first step and then work on the football after that. Because if you're a team, you know, you're losing. However, you are in games up to your fucking eyeballs. That's attractive to players. Mm. A team that is an absolute fucking dumpster fire. And tell me, with everything that you've seen David Nofaluma do and the way you've seen him behave off the field, running at fans on social media, all of that shit, are you surprised that he's the smarmy little passive aggressive fuck making troubles within the team? No. You know, when I'm not, I'm not surprised. Exactly. By that at all. Exactly. So is that attractive to other players? <coughs> you know? I it, don't know what his reputation is in, in footy world amongst players. Uh, but that look that, I think that wouldn't think garner if it a came lot of respect out, from anyone that I, would I think come if in. it came out he was fixing bets, it would improve his reputation. Put it that way. So, um, yeah, I, it, it's a fucking poison chalice. Mm. Yep. And the thing is, I mean, the, the the way that they chew through coaches, I mean, Madge got a reasonable amount of time, or three and a half years. But, like, it's like I think anyone that comes in is going to need, you know, they're not going to turn things around in this off season for next year. Yeah. Fuck no. You know. <coughs> So yeah. um so what it does it just it just it just postpones the turnaround of the club even more even more so because there's just naturally going to be this period of time where it's going to take time to even see what's going to happen mm. for better well, or worse. Yeah. And and I think Lenny to your point though the the reason they had to get rid of him is once they've gotten rid of him then the, the next steps are that recruitment drive and the new coach. And what do you do if I you don't keep think they've recruited that? poorly so far? I know. No 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 no. no. Like, but but if you can't fire a coach and not not plan to recruit in the future, of course, yeah. You know? 
Um, even if it's only just for the fact that the next coach is going to use that as an excuse forever. Yeah. But if they keep him, then what are they doing? They're negotiating with players going, oh, don't worry, he won't be here next yes, season. Yes, it's fucking shit. Then that gets out because fucking everything gets out. Mm. Yep, yep. Yeah. So regardless of who comes in, I think they've built this centre of excellence at Concord and, and that's polarised a lot of the fan base. And it's alienated the Campbelltown and the, and the MacArthur region fans, which is a massive, massive nursery. And I, I feel like the, the way to counteract some of that discontent is to have the centre of excellence for the for the the NRL guys. Fair enough, it's based at Concord, and that's you know essentially West Tigers HQ. But take this. I guess the greatest form of flattery is imitation, right? So you look at what Penrith's done with the academy and the pathways. It, it, it fucking worked, right? It set them up for the success they've had over the last few seasons, yep. um, which doesn't look like stopping anytime soon. And the pathways and the, and the academy is just funneling premium talent into that system. And it yep. works, right? Everyone made fun of the five-year plan. It, it's fucking worked. There, there is no yep. arguing with that. I feel like the MacArthur region, much like the Nepean and Penrith area, it's a massive nursery. Some of the best players in the NRL have come through there. And there's a way to capture that. And it, there's probably no real need to put a timeline on it. But if it is five years... So fucking what? If it's ten years, I don't care. Put an academy out there, and have those pathways and funnel that talent through to the NRL squad. And, and essentially, I'm not saying replicate it completely, but there's a way that the Tigers can actually turn it around. And anyone on the board that thinks that is a bad idea and doesn't cater to both fucking factions, which is something that the Tigers have to contend with that no other club with the exception of maybe St. George Illawarra has to consider. Um, I think that is a massive step to when, when Nate, you talk about turning things around, it's not just about buying some talented guys within our early experience and, and throwing them on the paddock. The Tigers have yeah. to be about more than that and because that's what they've tried to do for a decade now and it hasn't fucking worked. So, yep. Yep. yes, the coach needs to get the best out of the playing group, um, and and who that coach is, I, again, I don't have an answer for it right now. But yep. if they find the guy, it gets the best out of the playing group, and they, you know, <laughs> to steal a magism, they're always in a fucking game, and they're competitive, and the players actually lift a bit. Probably indicates that maybe they were anti match. Um, let's see how they perform over the next few weeks. But you know, the dogs haven't improved with the, you know, the dogs have spoken their opinion without saying anything about Barrett. By the way, they've played since he's been gone. They haven't fucking improved at all. So, well, no, they, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't say they've regressed either. No. I think, I think they're, they're an uncoached side then and they're an uncoached side now. <laughs> True. So that's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a hell yeah, of a again, fix. But. At, at what stage do we look at the game and say, hmm, so we've got these fucking players who who want everything their way with guaranteed contracts, mm. guaranteed money, and this salary cap that even if they underperform or fucking are that disruptive that they are no longer wanted by a club, you know, um, you know we can't not pay them what they signed for three years ago. Mm. However... You have these coaches, and these coaches are on contracts, but they're not protected or covered by anybody. Mm. And so when everyone at, at management level in the club needs to save their fucking neck for poor imp- for poor fucking performances, who goes? Mm. Yeah. You know, I just feel like, co- the, the, and it, it's, it's essentially what you're saying, the, the, the expectation of the coach... And and the situation that he's put in, where he's, he's at times, depending on the situation, can be completely damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. Yeah. If he if he holds a playing group of of 
you know, these millennial fucking um, sensitive types, if he holds them accountable for, for not digging in and, and not, um, you know, not putting in for one another and not performing and, ha- and that affecting the results, which ultimately he's judged on, they mm. get their noses out of joint, then they don't perform and, and essentially don't play for him. He gets sacked anyway when he's essentially yep. just trying to do his fucking job and it's yeah, his yeah. job to lift them, which I guess that's why they tailor rosters around their guys and every coach does that. But, yeah. you know, someone like Madge was fucking going to struggle to win regardless. Like, if the playing group's for him, they w- weren't really fucking showing it. Yeah. Um, and if they were against him, then, you know, it's worked. <laughs> so, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you. So, moving right along to uh, the other one, Brownie. After getting flogged by Manly on the weekend, Nathan Brown came out and said that he couldn't commit to um, spending time in New Zealand long term. And that, and what that meant was that he intended to serve out his contract, which would take him through to the end of next year. And um, from there, you know, due to personal reasons, uh, he uh, c- couldn't commit to any, any further than that. Um, so the Warriors almost immediately just uh, announced his departure immediately. And um, so they've, they've uh, put, the, put the axe in, make an immediate change at the club. And club legend and uh, assistant coach Stacey Jones will take over for the rest of the season. I think, what do you think he's, about he's someone that will get the best out of him in that club. I think so too. I will agree with what you said the other night that guys that – Signed to play or coach the Warriors, thinking that Redcliffe was going to be an extension forever. of New Zealand forever and ever. Amen. Was a little poor, um, yeah. and and the Warriors being the club that really um, have done it the hardest through the COVID period. Um, yep. There's been no continuity and no no comfort level for them to be able to play, you know, out of home and around their around their families in New Zealand. Um, yeah. You know, to have players come there and then when it looks like, okay, it's time to go back to New Zealand while well, they're pulling the pin after, again, they've, they've fucking been away and played out of, away from home for, you know, more than any other club for the last two seasons or so. So, yep. um, and, and for the coach to do it, fuck, that's rough. Yeah, I think so. this, is, this is a great move for them. Uh, for the Warriors, a because I don't I don't rate Brownie as a coach at all. I mean his his entire um, bulk of his winning winning percentage came from his time over in the Super League. Mm. I mean he's co- coaching Australian sides. He's been an abject failure three out of three times. Um, whereas Stacey Jones, from the other hand, I mean the the, the thing that we speculate about the Warriors and you know, you know and why aren't they uh, harnessing the the power of you know the players that you know, come out of, you know, New Zealand is a fertile fucking ground for wonderful players. Yeah. And um, why haven't they been able to, I mean, Stacey, I mean, Stacey Jones is a guy who's had almost his entire career with that club. I mean, he, you know, he's grand final representative, you know, yeah. with the club, played with the club, um, you know, his entire NRL career of like, you know, 250 plus games with the club. Yeah. And then, um, and then he's, he was a part-time coaching role with them in 2008. Then he came back and played with them in 2009. And um, and then he returned to the club as their pathways manager in 2013, coached the junior Warriors to the um, 2014-20s premiership. Um, 2015-2016, he was the coach of the New South Wales Cup side, got him to the finals every year. And then he's been an assistant for the NRL side since 2017, um, apart from last year where he returned home during the COVID thing to um, to work with their Future Warriors program before heading back to Australia to rejoin the coaching staff. So this uh, this is a guy that most assuredly will have the full support and respect of the players. <laughs> Agreed. Absolutely yeah. entrenched in the fucking club culture for decades. Almost a... Yes. Almost a- a Ricky Stewart type, you know, how does that guy get sacked? Like if, Level if of he, bulletproof, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? But probably more deserving of it. I, yeah. I also yeah. like the fact that, you, you know how they say, you know, no, no one player is bigger than the club? Yep. I get the impression that Stacey Jones is as big as the club. 
And if there's anyone that gives me hope that they can talk to some of those players mm. and say, um, yeah, do, do you actually care about your career and your legacy and how people remember you? Because at this stage, it's pretty much the greatest thing that never was. Mm. Yeah. You know, that's that's how people refer to you. you you've worn off the fucking... Um, oh, well, you know, give him another chance or mm. let, let's see what he can do under another coach or in a different system. Fucking dig deep. Yep. <laughs> like to almost artificially give some of them a Benji Marshall moment. Yep. Uh, that's my big hope out of this. Not only is he, and I agree wholeheartedly with you, not only is he bigger than the Warriors, he's almost New Zealand Rugby League. And I yeah. feel like the impact that he could have with guys that are currently playing in the NRL that are, that are New Zealand born and raised, currently playing in the NRL for other clubs. The, yep. The, the opportunity to go home to New Zealand, play for the Warriors, and play for Stacey Jones, I feel for a lot of those guys would be fairly attractive, which yep. Yep. could potentially, again, the 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 Stacey Jones factor, potentially set the Warriors up. We talk about the you know. The, like we just spoke about with the Tigers, it could set the Warriors up. You know, the the, the crop of, um, you know, if you get those guys coming across and moving, you know, going back to New Zealand playing and, and what they could do with the pathways in the future Warriors program and, and, and these young kids coming through, like yep. that's potentially juggernaut worthy, you know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, like I tell you, I, I, I tell you as, as a coach, I am... 100% behind Stacey Jones. I hope I hope that the Warriors finish the season off amazingly well compared to the way that they've, that they've completed the first half of the season. Mm. Yep. And I hope they get back to, when they get back to New Zealand, I hope they, they start fucking killing it. And I hope he kills the coach and becomes their guy long term yeah. because, I mean, this is a guy that's had, has probably been involved with every player, local player that's been raised up through their system. Yeah. yeah. He's had, he's, he's had him at 20s and he's had him at pathways and, and all this sort of thing. And so if there's anyone who can, you know, potentially harness these guys and get them headed in the right direction <clears throat> as an entire club, yeah, then um, it's got to be him. I mean, if it's not him, That's then I can't, it. you know. Then I was, who? Yeah, and to extend from there, if Stacey Jones can't get through to Sean Johnson, Sean Johnson needs to retire. Yep. 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 100%. All right, moving right along. Uh, State of Origin. Game one uh, happened last night, uh, as uh, as our patrons would have heard. Uh, member side went up late last night, and uh, the Queensland side won uh, by a scoreline of sixteen points to ten. And uh, the Queensland's tries came through uh, Gay Eye Holmes and Daly Cherry Evans, uh, two conversions for Val Holmes, and New South Wales tries to Whiten and Murray with one conversion to Nathan Cleary. Who's going first? Oh. You gotcha. Mulling over this game for a day. It there were some very fucking strange selections here. And the advantage that Queensland had on paper, they took full advantage of. And their forward pack were consistent they played up tempo energetic football all fucking night and they absolutely dominated the New South Wales forwards there was there was no role in that New South Wales pack there was very little cohesion in terms of you know who was going to be doing the work and who was going to be following that up and then I said it in our member so I'm fascinated to know if Nathan's playing with some sort of leg injury at the moment because the height and the distance on his kicks was nowhere near what he's been achieving at club level. Um, and that's the, the, you know, my little fucking simpleton mind, that's the only thing you can think of. That maybe there was something in a groin or a, or a hip or something. But... But, but there's also something wrong with his brain as well, though, with some of the options he was taking. He was just a, it was just one of those all-time bad, like weird, disjointed fucking 
yeah, exactly. games that you don't really expect to have from a player that's got like half his fucking team around him, you know. And, like, and here's the thing: a, a lot of it was, a, a lot of it was designed around a Penrith style game plan, where if you are putting up, you know, big towering fucking bombs, every man and their uncle is going to be chasing them down, and then set a massive set in defence. I really would have liked to have seen both he and Luai try and control the territory game a bit more and that's fucking tough to do when you're getting dominated through the forwards but you should be good enough you really well, should be good well, enough well this is the thing I mean there were times where like there was there was a time in the first half where he passed the ball into Liam Martin's head where you know sort of 15 yeah. metres out where if he had have gone out the back to to um there to two pole yeah, stags that was it was a certain try because they were out there screaming for it alone and yeah. I mean, and and there was so many times when he would sort of step inside take the ball himself at like which or just take so long to make a decision that he'd get tackled and like that shit that, that hasn't happened for like three years yeah for it, him yeah and so um, like I've got a good credit I mean I I, I want to think that you know credit should go to Queensland maybe that you know they just uh did a great job of cutting his time down and 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 forced him into making some some poor decisions. Yeah, maybe but possible. like, yeah, you know, there was also. I mean, he also had plenty of time. There was plenty of things that just didn't go that that just didn't go to the right man. I, I think as well. One of the other things that this shows is the actual fucking value of Uppy. Um, like Dam- Damien Cook's a fantastic dummy half runner, but again, just made made some poor options and choices in attack. Um, and when it wasn't working, Luai didn't go looking for the ball. Yep. He hung back mm. and was very, very passive. Yep. I really wanted to see him, you know, chime in more and, and run more because near the end of the game, when they started really throwing it at him down that left edge, mm. there were metres to be had and, and eventually there was a mistake there. Yep. You know, but... Um, but on Queensland side, um, Munster was another world, just another fucking world. Everywhere he needed to be, um, I thought Val Holmes had an He's absolutely great. fucking sensational game, uh, and and seems to have matured a lot as a player. If you remember when he first came back from his his NFL stint, um, he he was a vastly different player, I think, mentally than he is now. You but he's also really he's also proven you can he's pr- proven it can be done though too yeah that's and he can it. come back and reverse the and, and reverse any you know um, you know handbrake or detriment to your career you know a little skip off into another sport can do and yep. um and he's he's better than he was when he left yeah that's for it. sure you know that's undoubtedly it. um uh Cobo ironically Cobo had a great Cobo had a great game. Yeah, uh, for a, de- a debut, it was one of those debuts where everything touched turns the gold. Yeah, and in and in attack, he gave he gave fucking uh, Toa a bath. I mean, like Toa still, you know, did his thing with his you know big carries and everything after kicks. Yep. But whenever the ball, like you know, whenever the the high ball went over towards <laughs> Cobo, yeah, you know, the try that Cobo set up, you know, with with um with Toa jamming in on the center, he just he had he had his way with him. In, in in attack, um, I'm not sure that one like that. That that was poor luck more than anything. That was the ball hit the deck, and Tyo's mistake was he chased the ball. He went he went to try and tow it forward and do something or whatever. He was moving in the ball on the ground, where he should have just stayed outside and waited. But he should have stayed on his guy. I mean, that's the thing. The yeah, ball went the ball exactly. went the um, ball went past him though. To the you know it went it went past. It skidded him, on, yeah. and he was and, and and he was at the center and he would left the, Cobo out there. Which the risk know, really reward for it. The risk reward for it was. For absolutely fucking horrid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Cotter had the great debut that we the, that we all assumed he would. I mean, like his style 50, of play. He's built, built, built for Origin. tackles, 51 tackles. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Crazy. Absolutely built for Origin. <laughs> Harry Grant was was tremendous as well. And, I mean, he was so good that, you know, that why well, Ben Hunt only probably got about 30 minutes or, you know, 35 mm, minutes yeah. in the game. And I don't think the Ben other- Hunt was bad. It's Harry he wasn't, Grant. No. Harry he wasn't Grant bad, but the, it didn't. The dynamic of the – and the ruck speed. When he yeah, out. he wasn't. Ben Hunt wasn't bad, but, I but mean, let, Harry Grant was the was was his, his arrival is what turned it around. Mm. Let's take let's take this as, at two different coaching methodologies, right? Billy Slater made some fucking early ass changes. 
yep. some early changes. He looked down at that field and he went, <laughs> fuck, that's a very quick game of rugby league. It was very fast. That's end-to-end stuff. There's no fucking stoppages anymore. I need to get some guys off, right? Brings Hunt on, puts Grant on. Brad Fittler looks at his side and says, huh, I have the person that's leading the Dally M race out there at the moment. I'm going to take him off for three quarters of the fucking game. Not only yeah. leading the Dally M, but he's also, the, as you've pointed out countless times, he's also the focal point of the, the most successful rugby league team in the competition over the last two or three seasons. Of and it's, and it's of proved, which the absolutely New proved South the value. Side has effectively been, yeah. been built. And fuck, he proved like. his value because, I mean, because maybe, <laughs> may, maybe that alone was the reason why Luai and Cleary were so off. Well, here's the thing. It has to Luai, be a factor at very least. First tackle yeah. of the game, first tackle of the game, Luai, Luai took a, a knock. Maybe that was it. Oh, yeah. Well, yo, 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 sorry. Yo. Yeah. And, Maybe. And, like, I think that was highly suspect that he even stayed on the field. Yeah. I think there was some HIA fuckery from the New South Wales staff because because it was assessed as, like, a as like a, a grade three. They were like, okay, that's something where the, the trainer for the side can make, can, you know, the, the overall doctor doesn't step yeah, in. Yeah, that's it. And so I, I'm, I'm for sure reckon there was fuckery afoot there to keep him on the field. And maybe he was off because he needed to be, you know, he needed to come off. I haven't heard any stories out about that, though. But, um, but maybe it'll come out that that's the case. Who knows? But it was certainly a factor. Like, we, we, we pilloried the selection of Jack Whiten, and I'm big enough to say when I, when I was wrong, he, he was fucking great. He, he, was he proved, I mean, like, I want to see him do it again and again and again, but the performance that he had last night yep. was one of those one of those performances where you go, that guy is a fucking state of origin player. Yeah. Like Tom Travoy's the state of origin player. He's not selected his position, but he's just one of these fucking guys. He's like Luke Lewis was a state of origin player. These guys that can get it, like Wade and he's pretty, you know, like they, they, you select them in the team and they just do the fucking job. And he did, I mean, and they, he did a great job in level, attack and they defense. They get to the level, they perform yeah. at the level. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, he, he, had, some, he, had, some, he had some great defensive d- defensive reads to shut stuff down from Queensland. He scored the first try of the game, obviously. He he really didn't really put a, step, a foot wrong. I think he might have made one error, but um, he, he was great. Yeah. Um, so credit him. like Pong, again people that we you know that we that we lambast regularly I mean Ponga had a couple of really good touches he did, in defense he was he was um perfectly sound and in attack I mean he threw the final pass you know one of them was with the Cobo the, the Cobo one that skidded across the ground and you know, got Cobo on the outside but I mean he also did, you know threw that that great ball for Holmes as well uh, to score the try that was ultimately the match winner or the match sealer mm. um so he, and, and he had a, he had a good game overall. Yeah, I think I, um, I think as as Jay said earlier, um, whether it's strategic or an observ- observation on the fly, um, the way Slater managed um, the timing of of his interchanges early early in the game, or certainly in the first half. Oh, he he just um, absolutely outcoached Freddie, and I mean we've we've established that the, he, that Freddie is. Not much of a, yeah. Not much of a coach, really. Um, but also, he's more of a vibe, you know. Like, you know, I think they they started to get the ascendancy in in an extremely fast paced game, and then he unleashed Carrigan into the game, who had a fucking outstanding, outstanding absolutely yeah debut. Um, I mean, he was probably the second best player on the field. Yeah. Yeah, again. after Cam, after Cam Russell, yeah, and the the pace of the game is is what really got me, and I think both sides were were up for it, but Queensland just seemed to keep the foot on the pedal for eighty fucking minutes, and I think New South Wales probably fluctuated a couple of times, and at that level, that's the difference, and um, you know, a couple of a couple of crisp plays that, that went Queensland's way and, and at the end of the day like right up until the last second New South Wales were you know half a, a couple of feet away and any outstretched arm from from scoring under the post and tying it up and sending it into extra time so yeah. it's not like yeah. they were completely blown off the park but to, to your point 
Oh. There were some selections there that that didn't give they them the best opportunity yeah. to win the at, game. At, at no, they certainly at had no the... stage in that game did they look like they were in control. No. Did they? No. Did they? Look yeah, yeah. Like... But having said that, though, the amount of opportunities they generated that a better decision yeah. from the halves would have resulted in tries for sure. Yeah. That's and it. not not to mention, you know, things like Cam Murray stopping in the fucking line when it should have been a try under the sticks for Polo, like. Yeah, shit. Like they, they, they had their opportunities. You know, no matter what, I, I feel like statistically the forwards for New South Wales were were poor because they were kind of because it seemed like the first three tackles you know, in, of every set, it was guys like Tupo doing, like they were the ones doing the hit ups from the fucking first set. Mm. You know, but see, the, this is the thing. It, it's again, it's Freddie. What he's done is because that, that's essentially the Penrith game plan. Yeah, yeah. That essentially the back three will take the first three tackles. Yep. In almost every set. Yep. Almost every set. You know, so, what's he done? Oh, okay, that works really well for them. And we've got some Panthers players in there. Um. Yeah, it. Uh, um. I, I worries. We spoke about it last night, but whilst I think. Um, Stephen Crichton is is worthy of a state of origin jersey and is certainly um, cape you know Own, up yeah. to that level. I just Own don't in the center position. exactly. If you're not going to play him in the centres, he shouldn't be in the side. And yeah, and has no no utility value. He's and it was he's unfair not a to guy throw him that, on that, could, that you could say right now. And and it's no slight on him. He just hasn't had the opportunity. But he's not he's not the guy that you could say like you say about White and he's he's a state of origin player. He hasn't had that opportunity, yep. and he's not going to get it if you're trying to shoehorn him into some makeshift utility role when he's a specialist centre. It was just a poor, yep. sele- poor selection, and in a game where the pace was so quickly, and interchange, every interchange really mattered, mm. you can't have like a nothing And I wonder if like Nico that. Hines, you know, we spoke about it, but I wonder if Nico Hines comes in and, and you know, he, he takes some of the pressure off Luai and Cleary in the halves and, until they get their head around, you know, the the match and how it's playing out and it makes them all better. You know, he comes in, takes a bit of pressure off and steers them around for a few sets and then clearly, you know, shakes it off and, and, and comes yeah, back at yeah. it, the same with Luai. So I, I, well, look, I don't know, it's speculation. The, the, most, exci- the most exciting part of the, the whole thing is that, that we had, Queensland had that incredible run when they had a team that was so much better and they had a collection of players that were so much better that it, it wasn't a fucking con- like if New South Wales came close and the year when they jagged it with fucking you know um, yeah with uh, with hot con that yeah I mean that was that was fucking ridiculous that they actually could win a win a series in, in the middle of that shit mm. and then we had a period there where where Queensland it wasn't quite the same disparity but there was it sort of swung the other way for a couple of years for New South Wales in terms of the quality of players that they had overall now I feel like it's it has swung back. To the point where the team, where for the first time in probably over, you know, like a decade and a half, maybe mm. the teams. I think they're more. I think they're more evenly matched than they've than they've been in ages, mm. recent history. Which means that the games come down to like you know small moments now, and we and we get like you know these fantastic, entertaining, close fought battles that are decided by little things like this. Yeah. Yeah. Fair point. You know, so, which is, which is great. Like it's going to be, you know, which, which bodes well. Hopefully it stays that way for, you know, a couple of years. And if we can get the, you know, and, and actually get these games that are like, you know, pick them sort of matches because they're so, they're so evenly matched and it's just what happens on the night, you know, and, and, you know, these small moments. Yeah. Spot on. Um, all right. So, I don't know if we really spoke. Did you want to? Do, did you have any socials for that one you want to do? Or oh, look, there probably was. I didn't even think to do that. <laughs> yeah, one, so. we've. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's okay. let, let me run through the socials. New South Wales people upset. Grover being a fuckhead. <laughs> um, socials done. <laughs> yeah. Pe- people from Victoria thinking they have the right to comment on rugby league. <laughs> I tell you what. Um... <laughs> What I don't want to hear about a game is like this is like the referee stuff. I mean, like sure, Ashley Klein is is not a referee's asshole and he sucks. Yeah. And there and there were things that were missed here and there you know, on both sides. But I mean, I don't think anyone's got the I don't think anyone has the the ability to claim ref's fault. No. On the on the result at all. Look, I like, I heard Freddie. I I didn't see this much during the game, and to be honest, I haven't looked at it today. Yeah. 
there was a lot of talk about Junior Paulo being held back from the scrum. I saw it, and it looked like it was it was the case. But I mean, Junior Paulo is a fucking big unit. Sack up and un fucking un, yeah. un ungrip yourself, mate. Yeah, you you're one of the biggest cunts on the field. Yeah, I mean, push off. <laughs> I mean, yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, honestly. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't. Th- I didn't think there was much. In and it. even and even then, it then. was still like fucking. Who was who was it? Was it Collins, Sims? I think. Lindsay, well, oh, Sim, sorry, yes. Lindsay, oh, Lindsay Collins. Lindsay Collins grabbing him, yeah. yeah. And I mean, but who was it that was broken off that, that just got Sims, left at sea by... Yeah. yeah so, so Sims still got fucking absolutely bathed by Daly anyway. And I don't think that... he was. It was such short range. I don't think he was going to get stopped anyway. I mean, all he would have had to do was take another step to his right if Paulo got out of, the, you know, got out of there rather than just like running you know, straight through. So, mm. you know... Fucking relax, and like complaining about shit like that just deflects. It deflects from the, the real it, hey. issues that lost the game and won the game. So, um, like looking forward to game two. Obviously, Queensland in the box seat now. And uh, if you got nothing else to say about it, let's move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we hit the games this week, starting on Friday night. Um, late game. There's no no Thursday night. No and uh, no pub slot game this week. And uh, we got the Cowboys taking on the Dragons. Uh, up there at the abattoir in Townsville. And uh, who knows what the fuck is going to happen <laughs> with this Cowboys side because Nanai would surely not be backing up after somehow getting back on the field after the ankle injury or whatever it was that he sustained during the game. Um, Dearden would, would certainly be playing. Cotter played a ridiculous game. And there's every chance that he's going to be rested, I would assume. Holmes, you'd think, would play, but... You know, I, I don't know. Um, the dragon side. Sullivan comes onto the bench. Uh, Fuimono drops out. Um, Hunt and Sims are named to back up. I think Ben Hunt would be good to go for sure. Uh, Sims. Yeah. Sims, I don't know. But, um, yeah. Can the Cowboys... Let's, 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 uh, let's, let's say with the Cowboys, let's assume... Let's make some assumptions and say that, that Cotter and Nanai don't play. And maybe Val doesn't play. I, I want to say, based on what I saw out of the Cowboys last week, mm. yeah, mi- minus their Origin stars, comfortably, yeah, I still think they, I, I think, yeah. I still think they handle the Dragons easily. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I don't think there's anything else to say. Anything else to say about it? To be honest, uh, the Titans take. Sorry, on the can I just make one yeah, point? Sorry, yeah. Just when Cotter and Cotter in particular. There was massive raps on him. He's had a magnificent season. Yep. When he gets through this origin, his first Origin series, regardless of the result in the series, if he continues to play like that and he comes mm-hmm. back into this Cowboys side, yep. the Cowboys, as good as they've been, are going to go to another fucking level because that guy showed in his first ever Origin game, showed he's a fucking guy that is willing to... And, and he's shown it with the Cowboys. He's a young fella. But come the back end of the season and they're, they're a side well and truly on the up, that kid is making a fucking name for himself and he's going to put that side on yeah. his back even more, you know, to the, to the same degree um, and take a lot of the load off Tamaloa. He, he yeah. is yeah. fucking impressive. Yeah, that's for it. sure. Okay, Saturday afternoon, the Titans take on the Rabbitohs uh, at Hope Solo Coliseum. Jane Campbell, uh, he is out, and I think it was at eight weeks with yeah, a hamstring eight, injury or six weeks. Yeah, no, long time. Weeks, really. um, yeah, so so Brimson goes back to fullback. Um, Paul Turner replaces him at five eight. Uh, Corey Thompson is out, um, unlikely to play due to injury. Marju comes back into the back line after spending yep. some time playing for what Burley and um, Herbert Nasenas masters out of seventeen and Tino named to back up. But once again, Saturday game. Every chance Tino rests on this one. The yeah. Rabbitohs. Totolo return, Totolo returns at prop. Nichols drops to the bench. Uh, Shaq Mitchell, <laughs> Shake Shaq Mitchell, uh, drops out of the squad. Um, Mama Zellis replaces Tuffy in the squad on the bench. Milne shifts to centre. Paulo named winger. Um, Murray and Arrow are named to back up. Arrow, you know, would certainly be playing, you would expect. Yep. Um, and Murray, you yeah, know, I'd say he's probably... I think he, what do you reckon? He, he, he'll, he'll probably play. He'll play. Yeah. Okay, so look, I think I think the rabbits showed uh, in in the the last time we saw them um, 
Well, against the West Tigers. Mm. I think, Tigers, I think Tigers played them back in a fucking form. As much as it they're, looking like they're, they're, oh. they're, they're looking like they're getting that attack back together. Mm. And, and, and they probably won't be affected by um, their origin players having their bus hijacked and being raped by a gang of AIDS-positive monkeys, as I hope happens to them. <laughs> as a, the the patrons with uh, the the agenda the agenda that Jay Jesus, yes. and I ad- adopted was that uh, rabbit eyes players absolutely AIDS <laughs> I killed it <laughs> rabbit eyes and Parramatta players just fucking yeah. my god state killers absolute state killers I think um, on top of the fact that as I said the the Tigers played the bunnies back into form I think the Titans are are on somewhat of a slide and in a bit of a slump at the moment. I think uh, free fall. Rabbit eyes will win. Yep, um, especially with and, and if Tino doesn't play, like mm. where's it come from? Because uh, as you know, I mean, they've already, I mean, Fafita's already out. Yeah. So like, uh, yeah. Uh, the Roosters take on the Storm at the SCG on Saturday afternoon. Teddy, Tupo, and Collins named to back up. Manu shifts the center, and the Garma and Smith drop to reserves. Baker drops to the bench. Saluka Fafita out in the reserves, and uh, Jared Warrior Hargraves is still out. Does Teddy does Teddy back up? Yeah, two by will for sure. Collins maybe not. It's usually the forwards no. you see they tend to tend to see rested more. Yeah, uh, after an Origin game. Okay, so the Storm side, uh, Big Nelson he returns at prop with uh, Brandon Smith and Tui Kamakamika dropping to the interchange. Harry Grant will start at hooker. Uh, Alec McDonald returns from injury on the interchange. Munster, Kafusi, Coates, and Grant, well, they all were, were expected to back up from Origin 1. However, uh, Coates probably won't be playing, right? What was the verdict on what happened on, on, Fuck, he was on, on his injury situation? He was on crutches yeah. after the games. So. Yeah. Yeah, so did, did, you hear what it, did you hear anything about what it no. what it was and how long? Yeah. No, oh, during uh, the game they said syndesmosis, but that, that's yeah, yeah. You, you would you would expect Munster, Munster to back up Kafusi, you know, maybe not, but you know the way that, the way that Craig is as well. I mean, you know, it's, it, it wouldn't is, be surprising if soft, he gave some he guys. Softening though, in but terms no, of, I, I think he's very much yeah, fucking rest. I don't care. It's one game. Yeah, rest, but I mean, he's always he's always been yeah, he's yeah. always been fairly fairly. Uh, I don't know, amenable to resting players, and especially where you when you when you think that you know you'd really want them in for a game against the Roosters. But uh, yeah, a lot of these games are very contingent on who backs up. Um, look, again, we don't quite know what to expect out of out of the Roosters side. Uh, like Teddy had a fantastic game in the State of Origin, um, got through a lot of work. I don't know, I'm still going. To, I'm still going to favour the storm. Yeah, can't go past that. I I, 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 I think, but again, like I, you know, I want storm, to see two consistent it, weeks in a row from the Roosters. If the storm, if the storm rested all of their guys, like, uh, you know, if they rested, say, if they rested Munster and Harry Grant, mm. then uh, you know the pendulum does swing. I think they the Roosters, both. I think I think they both insist on playing. To be honest, I don't think they they're up for a rest. Uh, and and yeah. I think based on that and the consistency with Munster and Hughes um, together in and the house. takes that if Munster takes that back into the into the NRL. Oh please, fucking look out! Yeah, especially with guys like you yeah. know, yeah, especially if he's you know, stepping through through the likes of you know Sam Walker and Kiri. Yeah, no, no, none of none of which are amazing defensive powerhouses. No, that's that's a fair assessment. Um, yeah, I think Melbourne win easily. Easily, okay. The Broncos take on the Raiders at Suncorp. Uh, okay, so Reynolds returns from his hamstring injury. So that moves Ezra Mam to 5'8", and Tyson Gamble out of the side. So that's great raps for the young guy. Yeah, it is. That he was in there deputising for Adam Reynolds, and, and he's kept his, he's kept a spot in the halves. Mm. Um, so Capewell drops out. He They've already said he, he's, he's getting rested for game one, uh, after game one. Rabadi starts for him in the back row. Haas, Staggs, and Cobbo all named. Um, Staggs, was it a shoulder? Injury, I believe Haas is on under. At one stage. I, I think Haas is also under a bit of a cloud as well, uh, with something to do with his shoulder. Cobo, you'd think would play for sure. Uh, Haas and Stags, question marks there. The Raiders side, um, Rapina is suspended, so Schiller comes in on the wing. White and, and uh, Papali are named to back up after Origin. Frawley drops the reserves. Horsburgh benched. 
Um, Mooney drops the reserves and uh, Harry and I returns from uh, COVID. I think this will be an entertaining game. Uh, obviously, Reynolds back. Raiders, good last week. Um, I, I think this will be a very, very tight game. I expect Brisbane to to just get home in a tight one. Yeah, this is a good. It's it's a good. It's a good test of the the, the mindset and the current form streak that the Raiders are displaying. To be honest, yes, mm. that's. I it. feel I feel like the Raiders, the way they're playing at the moment, uh, are fairly evenly. They, I think they match up fairly well against the Broncos. It's a fairly even match, and so I guess it's just a matter of whether they can maintain that. I mean, the Broncos have finally reclaimed Suncorp as a, a as, as a happy hunting ground for them, and you know I would expect them to. Um, Canberra two dollars sixty. Broncos yeah, dollar like fifty. I, don't, I think that's yeah, that's off the I don't mark. know if it's that wide. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if it's that wide. I mean, I still do favour the Broncos in this game. Mm. Yep. But uh, look, I think if the, if the Canberra, if the, if the Raiders can get that the same kind of go forward from guys like Tarpany that they have over the last couple of weeks, then and like the, and this the the beginning of this Zach Wolford era as well. Yep. I mean, he's showing he he's, seems to be a perfect fit for them as well. Um, yeah, look, favour Brisbane, but I, yeah, I think what you were saying there about his eyes, I think Canberra are closer than that. Yeah, I agree. And they are not, with, and they are not without a chance. Definitely not. Especially if the, the, the Broncos sort of turn out what they did against the um, Titans in like the first half or the first 50 minutes of mm. the game. You know, there's, I mean, the Titans are the team that give that back. Yeah. They've done it multiple times this season. Yeah. You know, and the Raiders are traditionally, you know, the faders, but, you know, they're not given back 24 points. Yeah, that's it. You know, um, the West Tigers take on the Mighty Manly Seagulls at uh, Campbelltown. Noffo returns after successfully white anting Madge. Um, <laughs> so that pushes that pushes Kapoa out of the side entirely. I think he's pushed out of the club, to be honest. Um, Little returns at hooker with Madden on the bench and uh, New Brown dropping to the reserves. So the Noddy era begins and the Noddy era says that Little is a better option than Simkin. And that new Brown's impact from the bench that we've seen is inadequate compared to the feats of Jock Madden. Comments, Glenny. <laughs> uh, happy with Jock Madden on the bench. Um, he works hard. He gives, you know, he's he's a great effort guy when he comes on, so I don't don't hate his selection on the bench, although New Brown, um, certainly his first match for the Tigers was great. Um, look, I think it all comes down to do they get up and play for Naughty or do they drop their heads and um, yeah, I, I, I expect... Yeah, just just quickly, just quickly, we've got Manly, Manly side there, so Daly will, Daly will come back in, so that drops shoots to the bench, uh, four and shifts back to 5 eighth. Carl Lawton, he uh, is out for the season. Uh, I think he did an ACL last week in the win against the Warriors. Sorry, and please continue. Is that it for Manly? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just Daly coming back and then just you know, shuffling around, yeah. Uh, potentially, if they drop their heads, they'll get blasted. Um. Manly, you know, although I don't think Manly, uh, they're still in some ways um, a little bit patchy and inconsistent. But if the Tigers go in with a, with a shit attitude, they will get absolutely blown off the park. Oh, and I should say for the Manly selections as well, you got Paseca there in eighteen. He got through. He got through a game in Reggie's last week, so I expect him to drop back in at the expense of probably Kepi or Tapau. Um, Although both of them were, you know, were decent last week as well. Yeah, look, this game, I think this game goes, there's, there are two possible outcomes. The Tigers get absolutely fucking destroyed as they pack it in. Mm. Or the Tigers lift incredibly and play this amazing game. And then it just depends what which Manly turns up, whether, whether that's a, a Tigers win or it's a close game or, you know, whatever happens. Mm. Um, 
Mm. And I've done, and it's and it's so hard to it's so hard to read. What's well, mate, they've, you know, Tigers. they've done both of those under match, so there's nothing to really indicate that it goes either way because they've, yeah, and it's, they've and had it's hard those to games say. where they've turned it up and got blasted and then they've had games where they've actually fucking shown up and played well, so. Yeah, and I mean, and like, and, and even those, you know, some of those epic wins that they had, I mean, they were still, like that game against Parramatta, that that, that required a fucking all-time wasteful and error-ridden, error yeah. you know, Parramatta side to, to show up on that day. Uh, look, I don't think, I don't think that, uh, that Little is the, is the better of you know, of Simkin? I think I think that's a backward step um, for in terms of selections. Um, well, I think Little both when Madge and to his credit, he's he's tried to make sure that Simkin is is being brought along and and was was giving him the opportunity in first grade. But I think that the edge that Little has um, over Simkin is his speed off the mark around the ruck um, and. The ability to capitalise with that on on quick play of the balls is is what gives him the edge. Um, I think Simkin's pass is better, and I think they're both probably much of a muchness defensively. So um, that's that's probably the only edge Little has, and um, neither of them have a kicking game out of dummy half. Which yeah, uh, starting which starting props of James Tamau and Zane Musgrove cast fear into the hearts of nobody. Yes. In particular, oh, maybe um, the New South Wales pack. <laughs> <laughs> still, still smarting. And uh, and look, you know the the doors open now for for Reuben Garrick to to claim his rightful spot in New South Wales side, even if it's as at a, the expense of Daniel Tupo. Even as the expense of Daniel Tupo. Um, <laughs> and it was funny, like you, we would have said would have said before last night that uh, that Homoli had also like, I mean, there's a vacancy opening up in that New South Wales side at the expense of Sims, and whether they just go okay, fuck Sims off and bring Frizzle in, who's already in the in the squad. Yep. Or like you know, bring in a guy like Hamoli who's in form and uh, at the moment. But until then, like late last night, we saw on Hamoli's Instagram where he was like <laughs> saying, "Yeah, he's always been a Queenslander." Fuck. <laughs> he's eligible for New South Wales, and he was brought in. And and maybe and maybe that's the Instagram Instagram shithousery of someone who knows that they're not in the plans <laughs> for yeah, the, for the Blues ever. It. Um, I don't know, but uh, look, yeah, I I expect Manly to win, and um. And, it, and, it, and the magnitude of it really just does depend on the West Tigers. And what happens if they get behind early? What happens if there's a couple of tries put on them and they're sort of down like 12 points to 14, you know, 14 points? What happens if they go down but like that much? Like the last time they played, they fought back uh, to an extent before Manly sort of switched it on again and pulled away. Um, that's a real test. And and it makes, me, it makes me wonder with these selections, is Simkin... So is, does that mean that Simkin and... Um, well, well, Simkin it was a Madge guy. Little, not so much. Um, Noffa wasn't a Madge guy, clearly. Um, That's a good point. Um, I don't, I don't know how much. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a valid point. So maybe, I mean, look, maybe, maybe we may be looking too much into the selections and shit. Anyway, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't know. But I mean, that's when a coach gets knifed. That's, that's all the behind the scenes shit that you know that I, I'm, I'm trying to you know read into when you look at the selections. I mean, the Noffa ones, like it was, you know, clearly that's black and white. Obviously, Madge had a disciplinary disciplinary issue with him that he and he was in reserve grade as punishment for that issue. Yeah, and now Madge has gone and and. Noddy's just looked at it and gone, well, look, he's fucking yeah, better than Kapoa, so he's gone straight back in. Um, yep. But yeah, uh, Manly 13 plus. The Knights take on the Panthers in Newcastle. Kurt Mann returns on the bench. Crosland drops to the reserves. Daniel Saifidi is out, replaced by his brother Jacob. Thompson named on the bench. Ponga and Gagai named to back up from Origin 1. I would expect both of those players to play. Um, the Panthers side. Okay, so they've got an extended 24 man squad. And so you've got the all of the origin players named. Jennings, Smith, O'Sullivan, Falls, and Staines drop to the reserves, with Spencer uh, Lanou also pushed out of the 17 in favour of Matt Eisenhuth. And who fucking knows? Like, I don't think we'll find out for another day or two just when they yeah. start to cut that squad down to see who's going to be rested and who's not going to be rested. It's only the Knights. Rest them all. Yeah, true. Rest them all. That is true. Win. 
look, um, yeah, uh, uh, Penrith will, will just roll on. Um, I think it'd be great if the Origin guys get back in and just get back into a familiar rhythm. Um, it's always tough coming back to clubland after a loss like that, but if, if there's a, a a kind game to have after that and after you've played midweek, I think it's Newcastle at the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, Penrith should take that one quite easily. Agreed. Oh, look, the thing, the thing with Penrith is, I mean, you know, there's a large chunk of their forwards that just don't, that, that uh, didn't play Origin or aren't eligible for, to, to play State of Origin. And, yeah. And, and those guys represent, you know, the, a, a large part of that nucleus there. So, yeah, they'll roll over what Newcastle have. I mean, inju- I mean, even at full strength. But I mean, like the yeah, they're also injury affected. The Knights there in the forwards. So I think that the Panthers can set a platform there and hopefully get some confidence to those other motherfuckers so they can come out in game two for us and do the job. Um, yeah, that's it. Warriors take on the Sharks at Redcliffe. It's the old fucking uh, sponge cake derby with Stacey Jones. Not making too many changes actually following the departure of Brown, so uh, Curran's on the bench. So that's uh, he's he's returned from injury, which is uh, well overdue. Um, Otacolo's out of the squad. Penne drops the reserves. Louis, Dinamis Louis on the bench instead. The Sharks, Ramian returns from suspension into centres. That pushes Connor Tracy out of the seventeen. Otherwise, no other changes. Sharks too good. I don't see yeah, the Warriors bouncing so. back after Brownie. Um, to yeah. to that degree, and to be good enough to beat the Sharks, they've been fucking horrible the last couple of weeks. I wonder if the, I wonder if the, if Stacey Jones will just improve the base level, like just as a base level effort, like just like intent and desire in what they do, because that game like last week against Manly, Manly was fucking. They rolled the entire length of the field. <laughs> On the first set, mm. like the entire length of the field down to the point where they could score a try, like and, and or, sorry, attack the line on the very first set of the game. So that that shit is un, unforgivable. And so I would like to see, if nothing else, just some just some fucking intent and intensity in what they do and some pride in their fucking jersey. Yeah. Um, look, I think that I think the Sharks are obviously a far better side. They've had a bit of a dip from the time there where they were playing against Morgan Harper, but uh, you know, I still I still think they've I still think they've got the Warriors well and truly covered. Yep, agreed. Sharks by plenty. Doggies take on the Eels Monday, four PM, and uh, no changes to the doggy side. Why change a winning formula? I say. Avarillo named at fullback, Allen at centre. Um, Pangai Jr. and Dufty named in the reserves. While uh, Isaac Lume Lume makes his appearance on the extended bench. The eel side. Sivo returns on the wing, pushing Blake to the centre and Opacek out of the 17. Madison, Paulo and RCG are all named. Who knows if they'll play? Madison should mm. play. I mean, he had a pretty clean jersey. Didn't he? Um, Bulldogs because fuck Parramatta as a staff record label and as a motherfucking crew. <laughs> yeah. for, Your fucking bitterness is fucking delightful oh. tonight. I love it. That's one of my favourite things the about spot. Origin. It's, it's it. It's my, my team. My Good team. Team, my team lost Origin, so I'm going to use this as jet fuel for the agendas against the teams I hate. <laughs> uh, here's the thing, right? And I, I said this when RCG was picked for the team. You know, you spoke about Whiten. Whiten is an origin player. RCG yeah. is not an origin player. Yep. But he's done it. And if you're... It, he's a great club man. But that just... It, both his body shape and his mindset and all of that stuff, he is not a state of origin prop. So, um, because of that, fuck Parramatta. Yeah, like the Paramount, Paramount years Lang- ago, languish in fucking mediocrity for another thirty years. Yeah, I think the, the doggies covered just quietly. Yeah, no, while, 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 <laughs> while I while I support while I support Jay's agenda a thousand percent. Believe me, I mean, you know, I was born hating the eels. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. If, if if it was to transpire, then you know, like uh, yeah, of course I'd be breaking out the fucking loop. But yeah, no. but. I just don't think the doggies have any fucking future. Do Burton and Fox have 30 points between them? (laughs) Well, look, Fox, this is a legitimate origin trial. 
for Fox. Yeah. I mean, if, if if he can have a blinder score six tries that's against it. the Eels off the boot of Matt Burton, that's it. Then then he but. gives New South Wales a legitimate <laughs> a legitimate target for the, for the short kicking game. Look, is there any? Yeah, I just I, I don't see any way. There's not a scenario that even your fucking imagination could cook up that uh, would see the dogs winning this game. Yes, not even worth a conversation. All right. So that's that. That is round 14 coming up this weekend. And um, that's the episode, episode 470. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, by all means, feel free to become a patron at patreon.com forward slash tall nation. We are just about to come up to the, our just talking before the show about the, uh, the first gift drop for our members on the higher tiers. So I can't wait to get that stuff out there. And, uh, and I know I st- still have to get these polos organized and things for the members packs for, for everybody else, which will definitely be happening. Now I'm starting to see some clear air from some, uh, work, which is great. Um, what else? Is there anything else we need to talk about? I think we've just about got it all covered. Done. No, we're good. We are good. We are done. I think I've got stuff to do on Sunday, Glenny, but if if I can find my way free and if it finishes early and I think we'll try we'll try and do like a second half or something on Sunday Arvo. If possible. Yeah. It's an earlier game though, so yeah, it'd be true. like sort of we'd have we'd have to do it about three o'clock and I think that I've got this yeah. four length musical shit to deal with. <laughs> However I um <laughs> Oh fuck! Actually, I would have to let you know. I do believe yeah. that we are having a little, a little date on Sunday. Yeah. yeah, if we if we if we can do it, great. If not, then you know, whatever. But um, yeah, TBA. Correct. Excellent. Right. So that's it, boys. Sweet. I'll talk well to you on uh, I guess we'll talk to you on Monday night. Yes. Let's lock nice. in. Let's lock in Monday. This whole. Well, we have to because it's a Monday afternoon game. Of course, the, um, eels and yeah. doggies. Yeah, no, fair call. So yeah, no, so we have to. It's def- this time is Monday. It's not Tuesday. It's we're doing it That's Monday, it. all right? Yeah. <laughs> Done. All right, fellas. Talk all to right. you then. See you, bye. Bye, boys. <laughs>